Hello friends, in this video we will read chapter 1 nutrition in plants taken from class 7th subject science. We will read this chapter and do question answers in the next video. Let's start. In class 6, you learned that food is essential for all living organisms. You also learned that carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals are components of food. These components of food are called nutrients and are necessary for our body. All living organisms require food. Plants can synthesize food for themselves, but animals including humans cannot. They get it from plants or animals that eat plants. Thus, humans and animals are directly or indirectly dependent on plants. Bujo wants to know how plants prepare their own food. 1.1 Mode of Nutrition in Plants Plants are the only organisms that can prepare food for themselves by using water carbon dioxide and minerals. The raw materials are present in their surroundings. The nutrients enable living organisms to build their bodies, to grow, to repair damaged part of their bodies and provide the energy to carry out life processes. Nutrition is the mode of taking food by an organism and its utilization by the body. The mode of nutrition in which organisms make food themselves from simple substances is called autotropic nutrition. Auto means self, tropos means nourishment. Therefore, plants are called autotrophs. Animals and most other organisms take in food prepared by plants. They are called heterotrophs. Heteros means other. Paheli wants to know why our body cannot make food from carbon dioxide, water and minerals like plants do. Now we may ask where the food factories of plants are located. Whether food is made in all parts of a plant or only in certain parts. How do plants obtain the raw materials from the surroundings? How do they transport them to the food factories of plants? 1.2 Photosynthesis Food making process in plants Leaves are the food factories of plants. Therefore, all the raw materials must reach the leaf. Water and minerals present in the soil are absorbed by the roots and transported to the leaves. Carbon dioxide from air is taken in through the tiny pores present on the surface of leaves. These pores are surrounded by guard cells. Such pores are called stomata. Figure 1.2 C. Let us read cells. Figure 1.1 Cell. This is nucleus, this is cytoplasm and this is cell membrane. You have seen that buildings are made of bricks. Similarly, the bodies of living organisms are made of tiny units called cells. Cells can be seen only under the microscope. Some organisms are made of only one cell. The cell is enclosed by a thin outer boundary called the cell membrane. Most cells have a distinct centrally located spherical structure called the nucleus. The nucleus is surrounded by a jelly-like substance called cytoplasm. Bujo wants to know how water and minerals absorbed by roots reach the leaves. Water and minerals are transported to the leaves by the vessels which run like pipes throughout the root, the stem, the branches and the leaves. They form a continuous path or passage for the nutrients to reach the leaf. They are called vessels. You will learn more about transport of minerals in plants in chapter 7. Paheli wants to know what is so special about the leaves that they can synthesize food but other parts of the plant cannot. The leaves have a green pigment called chlorophyll. It helps leaves to capture the energy of the sunlight. This energy is used to synthesize, that is prepare, food from carbon dioxide and water. Since the synthesis of food occurs in the presence of sunlight, it is called photosynthesis. Photo means light and synthesis means to combine. So we find that chlorophyll, sunlight, carbon dioxide and water are necessary to carry out the process of photosynthesis. It is a unique process on the earth. The solar energy is captured by the leaves and stored in the plant in the form of food. Thus, sun is the ultimate source of energy for all living organisms. Can you imagine life on earth in the absence of photosynthesis? In the absence of photosynthesis, there would not be any food. The survival of almost all living organisms directly or indirectly depends upon the food made by the plants. Besides, oxygen which is essential for the survival of all organisms is produced during photosynthesis. In the absence of photosynthesis, life would be impossible on the earth. 
Besides leaves, photosynthesis also takes place in other green parts of the plant, in green stems and green branches. The desert plants have scale or spine-like leaves to reduce loss of water by transpiration. These plants have green stems which carry out photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, chlorophyll containing cells of leaves, figure 1.2, in the presence of sunlight, use carbon dioxide and water to synthesize carbohydrates, figure 1.3. The process can be represented in an equation. Carbon dioxide plus water under the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives carbohydrate and oxygen. Figure 1.2, A, leaf. B section of leaf, these are chlorophylls, green pigments, these are guard cells and this is stoma, C stoma, this is guard cell and this is stomatal opening. Figure 1.3 diagram showing photosynthesis, this is the sun and we get light energy from it, chlorophyll in leaf, water and minerals from the soil. So plant absorb carbon dioxide and releases oxygen during photosynthesis. During the process, oxygen is released. The presence of starch in leaves indicates the occurrence of photosynthesis. Starch is also a carbohydrate. Bujo has observed some plants with deep red, violet and brown leaves. He wants to know whether these leaves also carry out photosynthesis. Activity 1.1 Take two potted plants of the same kind. Keep one in the dark or in a black box for 72 hours and the other in sunlight. Perform iodine test with the leaves of both the plants as you did in class 6. Record your results. Now leave the pot which was earlier kept in the dark in the sunlight for 3 to 4 days and perform the iodine test again on its leaves. Record your observations in your notebook. The leaves other than green also have chlorophyll. The large amount of red brown and other pigments mask the green color. Figure 1.4 Photosynthesis takes place in these leaves also. Figure 1.4 Leaves of various colors. As you can see different leaves have different colors. You often see slimy, green patches in ponds or stagnant water bodies. These are generally formed by the growth of organisms called algae. Can you guess why algae are green in color? They contain chlorophyll which gives them the green color. Algae can also prepare their own food by photosynthesis. Synthesis of plant food other than carbohydrates. You have just learned that plants synthesize carbohydrates through the process of photosynthesis. The carbohydrates are made of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. These are used to synthesize other components of food such as proteins and fats. But proteins are nitrogenous substances which contain nitrogen. From where do the plants obtain nitrogen? Recall that nitrogen is present in abundance in gases form in the air. However, plants cannot absorb nitrogen in this form. Soil has certain bacteria that convert gases nitrogen into a usable form and release it into the soil. These are absorbed by the plants along with water. Also, you might have seen farmers adding fertilizers rich in nitrogen to the soil. In this way, the plants fulfill their requirements of nitrogen along with the other constituents. Plants can then synthesize proteins and vitamins. 1.3 Other modes of nutrition in plants There are some plants which do not have chlorophyll. They cannot synthesize food. How do they survive and from where do they derive nutrition? Like humans and animals, such plants depend on the food produced by other plants. They use the heterotropic mode of nutrition. Look at figure 1.5. Figure 1.5 Cascata Amarbale on host plant. Do you see a yellow wiry branch structure twinning around the stem and branches of a tree? This is a plant called Cascata Amarbale. It does not have chlorophyll. It takes ready-made food from the plant on which it is climbing. The plant on which it climbs is called the host. Since it deprives the host of valuable nutrients, Cascata is called the parasite. Are we and other animals also a kind of parasites? You should think about it and discuss with your teacher. Paheli wants to know whether mosquitoes, bed bugs, lice and leeches that suck our blood are also parasites. Have you seen or heard of plants that can eat animals? There are a few plants which can trap insects and digest them. Is it not amazing? 
such plants may be green or of some other color look at the plant in figure 1.6 the pitcher like or jug like structure is the modified part of leaf the apex of the leaf forms a lid which can open and close the mouth of the pitcher inside the pitcher there are hair which are directed downwards when an insect land in the pitcher the lid closes and the trapped insect gets entangled into the hair the lid closes and the insect is trapped the insect is digested by the digestive juices secreted in the pitcher and its nutrients are absorbed such insect eating plants are called insectivorous plants is it possible that such plants do not get all the required nutrients from the soil in which they grow bujo is confused if the pitcher plant is green and carries out photosynthesis then why does it feed on insects figure 1.6 pitcher plant showing lid and pitcher this is the lid leaf modified into pitcher 1.4 separate drops you might have seen packets of mushrooms sold in the vegetable market you may have also seen fluffy umbrella like patches growing in moist soils or on rotting wood during the rainy season figure 1.7 packet of mushrooms a mushroom growing on decayed material let us find out what type of nutrients they need to survive and from where they get them bujo wants to know how these organisms acquire nutrients they do not have mouths like animals do they are not like green plants as they lack chlorophyll and cannot make food by photosynthesis activity 1.2 take a piece of bread and moisten it with water leave it in a moist warm place for 2 to 3 days or until fluffy patches appear on them figure 1.8 fungi growing on bread what is the color of these patches observe the patches under a microscope or a magnifying glass write down your observations in the notebook you will see cotton like threads spread on the piece of bread these organisms are called fungi they have a different mode of nutrition they absorb the nutrients from the bread this mode of nutrition in which organism take in nutrients from dead and decaying matter is called saprotropic nutrition such organisms with saprotropic mode of nutrition are called saprotrophs fungi also grow on pickles leather clothes and other articles that are left in hot and humid weather for long time during the rainy season they spoil many things ask your parents about the menace of fungi in your house the fungal spores are generally present in the air pahili is keen to know whether her beautiful shoes which she wore on special occasions were spoiled by fungi during the rainy season she wants to know how fungi appear suddenly during the rainy season when they land on wet and warm things they germinate and grow now can you figure out how we can protect our things from getting spoiled bujo says once his grandfather told him that his wheat fields were spoiled by a fungus he wants to know if fungi cause diseases also Pahili told him that many fungi like yeast and mushrooms are useful but some fungi cause diseases in plants animals including humans some fungi are also used as medicines some organisms live together and share both shelter and nutrients this relationship is called symbiosis for example certain fungi live inside the root of plants the plants provide nutrients to the fungus and in return The fungus provides water and certain nutrients. In organisms called lichens, a chlorophyll containing partner which is an alga and a fungus live together. The fungus provides shelter, water and minerals to the alga and in return the alga prepares and provide food to the fungus. 1.5 How nutrients are replenished in the soil? Have you seen farmers spreading manure or fertilizers in the fields? or gardeners using them in lawns or in pots do you know why this is done you learned that plants absorb minerals and nutrients from the soil so their amounts in the soil keep on declining fertilizers and manures contain nutrients such as nitrogen potassium phosphorus etc these nutrients need to be added from time to time to enrich the soil we can grow plants and keep them healthy if we can fulfill the nutrient requirement of plants usually crop plants absorb a lot of nitrogen and the soil becomes deficient in nitrogen you learned that though nitrogen gas is available in plenty in the air 
plants cannot use it in the manner they can use carbon dioxide. They need nitrogen in a soluble form. The bacterium called rhizobium can take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into a usable form. But rhizobium cannot make its own food. So, it often lives in the roots of gram, peas, moam, beans and other legumes and provides them with nitrogen. In return, the plants provide food and shelter to the bacteria. They thus have a symbiotic relationship. This association is of great significance for the farmers. They can reduce the use of nitrogenous fertilizer where leguminous plants are grown. Most of the pulses, that is dals, are obtained from leguminous plants. In this chapter, you learn that most of the plants are autotrophs, only a few plants are parasitic or saprotropic. They derive nutrition from other organisms. All animals are categorized as heterotrophs since they depend on plants and other animals for food. Can we say that the insectivorous plants are partial heterotrophs? Friends, we have completed the chapter. Now let's read what you have learned. All organisms need food and utilize it to get energy for growth and maintenance of their body. Green plants synthesize food for themselves by the process of photosynthesis. They are autotrophs. Plants like cascata are parasites. They take food from the host plant. Plants use simple chemical substances like carbon dioxide, water and minerals for the synthesis of food. Chlorophyll, water, carbon dioxide and sunlight are the essential requirements for photosynthesis. Complex chemical substances such as carbohydrates are the products of photosynthesis. Solar energy is absorbed by the chlorophylls present in leaves or plants. Oxygen is produced during photosynthesis. Oxygen released in photosynthesis is utilized by living organisms for their survival. Many fungi derive nutrition from dead and decaying matter. They are saprotrophs. A few plants and all animals are dependent on other for their nutrition and are called heterotrophs. Friends, we have completed the chapter and we will do these question answers in the separate video. If you like the video, kindly share it with your friends. In case you have not subscribed to my channel, kindly subscribe it and press the bell icon so that new video notifications could reach you. We'll meet in the next video. Till then, take care and respect your elders. I am Vaibhav signing off. Thank you for watching.